Well, joining us now is General Sir Richard Barons, former head of the UK's Joint Command Forces. Uh, General Barons, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, how confident are you of a temporary ceasefire actually happening? I think it's, it's extremely unlikely. We've seen over the last 11 days the Israeli ground forces uh, preparing for where they are right today, which is they've encircled Gaza City and they believe that the heart of Hamas is in Gaza City and we're about to see, I think, their movement into the city to try and defeat Hamas leadership and destroy their infrastructure. So a pause now would run counter to everything Israel has been doing for the last month. And in terms of Israel's efforts, uh, obviously this all centres on the Israeli position, Sir Richard, that they want to obliterate and eradicate Hamas. Um, I mean, is that even notionally even possible? No, it's not possible. You, you can't use force to kill an idea, and it would be extraordinary if every fighting member of Hamas decided the thing to do was to be in Gaza City and take the Israeli military on with no hope, really, of, of escaping. So we must assume that many Hamas fighters and leaders are in the south of Gaza or, indeed, not even in Gaza. So when Israel does whatever it can do to destroy Hamas, it will not have killed the idea and it will not have destroyed every member of Hamas. It may well have neutered it for a while and it will surely have deterred it from doing the sort of thing we saw on the 7th of, 7th of October. But this is going to feel like mowing the grass unless there is a political solution. Uh, Sir Richard, for the average person watching some of the footage coming out of Gaza, we're seeing children killed on a, an enormous scale. We're seeing hospitals bombed and obviously Israel saying that, you know, Hamas are using civilians as human shields. It's very, very difficult to kind of compute that that would be within the realm of international law. With your background, your military uh, experience, how do you watch, when you watch images like that, when you see footage like that, are you aware of the fact that those actions have been taken legally? I'm aware that those actions have been taken and they've been taken knowingly. I mean, the, the, there is always a question of judgment about the law. And the challenge, and it is absolutely appalling that we are uh, faced with looking at now, is Israel believes it's engaged in an existential struggle against Hamas and Hamas has pledged to destroy Israel. And in that setting, Israel believes it is necessary and proportionate to do everything it has to do to destroy Hamas. And, and if that means killing civilians who are essentially collateral damage, then it, it is clearly doing it. And it's clearly doing it regardless of the effect it may have on, on the hostages. Uh, and, and for many, many other of us around the world, this is an extraordinary war, the like of which we've not really seen since perhaps the Vietnam War or the, or the Second World War. And, and you just can't compare it to things, in my own experience, like Iraq and Afghanistan. And the difficulty, Sir Richard, for... Uh, for Israel and, and those calling on a ceasefire, of course, is that how, how do you get a ceasefire out of a terrorist organisation? Well, that is that is a major problem, but it, this all points to the fact that the, the military can do what military can do. It, it essentially, it, it kills people and it, and it breaks stuff. It breaks up the, the, the built environment and it's meant to take you to a better place. But in the absence of a of a way out of this, some sort of politically designed solution that will sort out a more stable relationship between Palestine and Israel, then this it's hard to see how this violence is more than violence. So, Richard, a lot of people calling the calls for ceasefire naive. You know, as Ian said there, it's very difficult to get a ceasefire or get cooperation from what is ultimately a terrorist organisation. Lots of people calling for a two-state solution. But bearing in mind what we have seen over the past month, do you think that even a peaceful two-state solution is even possible? So I think it's naive to call for a ceasefire right now because Israel is on the threshold of launching the major part of its military operation around uh, Gaza City. So uh, it's just not going to be open, I think, to that sort of suggestion. But in the end, the, the violence will have to culminate. Then there has to be a, a, a political solution. And as we've seen in many other settings, and in a small way, you could cite Northern Ireland, where terrible violence essentially scars at least two generations. So a, a, a two-state solution living in any sort of harmony right now seems to me a very long way away. But the geography is never going to change here. So we have to find a political way of, of getting between Israel and the Palestinians in order to 
uh, assert some sort of better outcome. The violence has to go somewhere in the end. And where does this end, uh, Sir Richard? You know, we, we talk about what happened, the, the horrendous and murderous events of October the 7th, but, of course, th this predates uh, that horror by, by decades, of course. This is ongoing and it has been uh, f f what seems like forever to, to most of us, even if you were to obliterate Hamas, and as you rightly said, that's, it's an idea, it's an ideology, how could you? Um, that leaves a huge vacuum there. Who would look after, who would govern mm. the people left in Gaza? What, where does it go from here? It's very hard to even take a, an educated guess as to how this could even begin to end, if that makes sense. So I think there are some things we can be sure about, and, and none of them are good. First of all, an awful lot of Gaza will have been destroyed, and as a functioning place to live and a functioning economy, and that was always rather tenuous, it will, it will just be appalling. An awful lot of people, two million people, will have been traumatised by this and will feel they have no residual life prospects. Israel is likely to feel that it's at least deterred or perhaps even temporarily broken Hamas, but it won't really know what to do with Gaza, or, or you know, its its neighbour, and it, it has no intention of occupying it because that would be uh, completely un unsuccessful. So if we dip into history, the ways out of this are other people have to step in and to help, and that probably means a a political solution that negotiates not just between Israel and Hamas, but between Israel and the region and those people that support. Uh, both sides of this. It's going to need, I think, a peacekeeping force to allow the Israeli military to leave and to give confidence to the people of Gaza that they can reset and part of that to make sure that Hamas does not resurrect itself as a terrorist organization in the in the way that we've seen. They've just got to create conditions, including um, aid and development and clearly food and water and power mm -hmm. that allows a political solution to take root over about a generation. There's nothing quick about this. And Richard, just really quickly, what about the UK's involvement, obviously at the moment showing support for, for Israel and their military action? At what point could you see the UK getting involved militarily in the conflict? So I don't think the UK is going to get involved militarily in the conflict. We have we have no interests uh, that, would, that would mean that we needed to do that. We need to steel ourselves, I think, for a resurrection of some forms of terrorism, both at home and abroad against UK interests because of our alignment, I think, um, with, with Israel. But the UK's role here with Europe is to recognise that we are a big, powerful country, big, powerful economy with important European neighbours. And surely one way around of, out of this is for Europe, including the UK, to find a voice in trying to help a solution because clearly the US is very closely wound to one side. China isn't going to do this. And so where else do you go other than Europe to find a sensible way out? Well, General Sir Richard Barons, thank you so much for joining us on Talk Today.